More breaking uranium news to cover in this video. I might as well just stay live on here. So what I'm going to cover in this is the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. Had some really big news today. And I'm gonna go over that. I'm gonna tell you exactly why spot market is actually running in uranium and where I think this is going. We're also gonna to touch on Bloomberg. They're actually reporting on uranium and the issues there in Kazakhstan. We're also gonna talk about the uranium stocks and how they're doing in Australia. I'm gonna go over that and a bunch of interesting articles. We had a sell-off somewhat in the tech sector today, the overall market. So uranium, some of the stocks, we'll see how they totally ended at the end of the day. All of them pretty much were green for the most part in the United States, and we're gonna go over that. And it's, uh, it's really crazy times to be in right now. So go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button below. So the first thing is uh, Bloomberg here, they are now reporting more on this Kazakhstan Uranium issue actually is what they're calling it. The uranium rich Kazakhstan threatens to boost prices. So they're actually talking about the uranium price and they're saying that uranium prices appear likely to rise as Kazakhstan, the world's largest producer of uranium, protests a uh, big challenge to the country's leadership in decades. Russia is actually sending an army convoy. They're flying them in. And this is pretty big. If anything, if, you know, I think if something bad happens to civilians there that are, say, protesting, this could continue to escalate higher and higher. Now, I've been getting a lot of messages from people that are actually, you know, have family there and they're asking if I know something about it or have heard anything. And it is, you know, pretty alarming. And it's, it's sad because they, you know, people can't get a hold of their loved ones. And, you know, there's kids there. So, you know, I don't take this lightly. I really do support the, the peaceful protesters there. And I, I do want them to have, you know, energy sources that are reliable, that they can, you know, have a good life. But, you know, as far as uranium, this should be able to really support that. And one big thing with uranium, the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust is now officially on the OTCQB, meaning brokers around the world can trade it, you know, if they approve it. So it is now approved to trade on the OTCQB. There is 5,000, I just tweeted this, 5,500 actual shareholders with at least 100 shares. So that's actually pretty interesting. One big thing about uh, Sprout Physical Uranium Trust is we saw a massive run, right? in the last probably three or four months, but it started to die off in September. And this is because the OTC changed the rules and they moved everything to these gray sheets or pink sheets. And uh, even if they were legit companies, they were not able to be traded by all brokers. So they finally got this done. It's kind of great. And we saw, if you look at the market charts here for Sprott, this is the OTC version. You can see that this green record buying volume, about 754,000, we have not seen anything break 754 since late, you know, October, early November. You know, this was actually when they stopped, you know, trading it. So if you look back a little farther, you can see pre, you know, pre the early September when we had that big run. This is really what was fueling it. Now, these multi-million share day volumes, this was more than the parent stock, you know, U.UN, it was trading in Canada. So this was the OTC version. So there was more money flowing into this than in the Canadian version. So, you know, they weren't able to raise as much in the past, like, you know, couple months, but they actually did raise, I think, 400,000 pounds. Uh, they bought today and they, you know, when they're trading at a premium, this is great. And this pushed up the spot price. And you can see here that it was about $46. This was uh, earlier today. And this is the ask. You see volume start to move into this again. We start to see volume like this. I think we're gonna see a run in spot again. You know, Kazadamprom and Kazakhstan, I really checked and their website's not up. You know, it's still down. So this is alarming. The market's probably, you know, being forward looking, thinking that uranium, just like Bloomberg was saying, and just like I've been saying, that uranium prices, you know, could go up and supplies could be screwed. But if you look here, the overall US stock market, this was a crazy day. Of course, some of the biggest stocks, the biggest stocks in the world were down. So, you know, a lot of selling, crazy volume, uh, you know, just seeing days where you see 6% in a massive stock like this, 4%, you know, this was unheard of to, to see, but you know, this is what you get when you have massive, you know, stocks, trillions and trillions of dollar market cap move a couple percent in a day. They're going to also be able to move down. And a lot of people are selling off, you know, a lot of tech. You can see everything is down. Some stocks down as much as 11%. Those look like a uranium stock on a bad day. 
but no, this is the overall you know sector. Now, if we look at the world, a lot of the world's on ten- in tension right now with specifically inflation and, and raising interest rates. That's basically what the Fed recently said. And I've been saying it for you know two years plus that you know inflation is going to go to record highs, and that's going to help the commodities run as well. If we want to look here, this is my uranium stock sheet. If you want access to this, link in the description below. But uh, I love tracking all the uranium stocks and a bunch of other information at the bottom here. You can actually see specifically for the uranium market that I track. Now, this was the percentage gains so far today in the uranium market. And you see a lot of stuff ran hard today. These were some of these were double this. Some of them were up, you know, 10, 15 percent. And at the end of the day, that text all, you know, a lot of people sold. But uh, it is nice to see Forum Energy Metals, you know, a stock I believe in actually up uh, 16%. It's really nice to see it close like that. I think commodity prices this year are going to continue to rise. And, you know, we're starting to see gas in (laughs) Great Britain, you know, the Euro natural gas start to pick up again. It's up, what, 4.8, 6.2% today, each one of those. So, We're going to start to see this continue to run. Uranium is going to start to run again overall as well. And uh, this is alarming, you know, alarming for a lot of people like, you know, this is great, you know, that we can trade this and we, you know, in a sense can benefit off it. But there are people out there and you got to remember, you know, getting those messages from people that their loved ones, their fiance, you know, is working there and they can't get a hold of them and asking me that, you know, that really just puts me back into perspective that, you know, there are people out there that that are going to be hurt from this. So it's not anything that I really want to rejoice. Yes, I want, you know, the world to have clean nuclear energy and everyone to have this, you know, but there's going to be a cost and, and it's going to be these parabolic moves where people are going to be really affected and it's really going to hurt them. And it's very sad. And, um, you know, I, I don't like that, but it is, you know, we do got to keep track of it. We live in a world where this is, you know, this is the crisis we live in and we're going to have to do whatever we can to help, you know, change it. Uranium can do that. So this is a uh, stock head, another article. I, uh, I thought this was kind of funny. They, they referenced, uh, quakes and I, they said that us traders, uh, are on edge of their seats forecasting the spot price could reach 140 with Kaz Adam prom having already warned of supply issues this year. I actually, you know, I'll, I'll actually say, I actually think it can hit 200. Now this year I have a, a price target of about 70, more than $70 by June, as you know, from previous videos. And uh, I have a tweet that I put out two years ago, almost that uh, on like June 20 or June 17th, I think that it, I believe that it could reach $70. So we'll see. Uh, but I think $200 plus, especially with inflation, Inflation numbers are going to get, you know, become a lot higher than what people think they're going to be. Michael J. Burry's said that. And, uh, you know, being 43% of the world, you know, global supply of uranium with the cuts already in uranium that I showed you before, they already had these supply cuts. This is big. The supply cuts here are going to be a lot less if we have protests continue. And uh, if there's any more political unrest, if Russia really does get involved, you got to remember Russia also needs uranium. And the world, you know, China needs uranium for these new reactors and they do use uranium also for, you know, warheads. So uh, it's not really something I like to talk about too much. You know, I do think that it's the dark side of uranium, but it is what countries, you know, use this stuff for, too. And uh, especially countries that, you know, specifically need uh, not only, you know, warheads, but uh, they need small modular reactor fuel, which is uranium. So, you know, that's the future China's looking to. And as I show you this near the end, it's still timing out. This is Kaz Adam Prom. So when the world's largest uranium producer, when their website is not even up, what does that make you think? Are, you know, are there, are there going to be issues with the supply chain? And, you know, in, in just, in my, in my eyes, there could be, and there will be. We've already seen what small supply disruptions can do. Uh, you know, last year when we had, you know, producers like Cameco going into the spot market, we saw the spot uranium price start to run for the last, you know, pretty much 12 months. It's been it's been running and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's hit a nine year high last uh, back in September. This is nine years. And we saw record spot volume in the spot uranium market. And if you see on this chart here, uh, this other one, you can see that uh, we're starting to have a lot more volume than back in the day. Now, 
the highest volume we had was in September this last year. We had more volume in the last this year than we had since 1996. So this is setting records. And as I said in the previous video, Kaz Adam Prom has projected supply disruptions way before any of this. And we're starting to see long-term contracting coming in the next couple of years. And if utilities do it early, we could see hundreds of millions of pounds being bought up in either the spot market, which I don't even think there's that much left in the spot market, uh, but mainly in these long-term contracts, obviously. And this is really what Uranium you know, thesis is all about, these long-term contracts. And honestly, this has always been an Eastern play for me. It's an Eastern play for, you know, in my opinion, for the long-term Uranium bull market, the demand side, the demand side of Uranium and the fact that supply is running low, the demand coming from the East, 100 plus, 150 plus reactors, you know, 160 if you count, you know, if you're counting the Korean reactors and, you know, small modular reactors. And China's, you know, the last like week, they've put like three new reactors they've actually uh, brought up online and connected to the power source. So this is, you know, a lot of crazy news. You know, uranium is, you know, a lot of people have started to see the hashtag is very popular now. A lot of uh, bigger traders that have been, you know, dabbling in all these, you know, bigger stocks or crypto or, you know, other mining stocks, they're starting to come over to uranium and they're starting to ask questions. So, you know, we're starting to see a big influence on this. You know, when Bloomberg starts talking about it every day, this could actually start to bring a lot of new investors. And I think that's what happened today. You know, I've been covering uranium for two years. I've been called, you know, my stocks were called dumpster stocks by majority of uh, people I ever talked to about them. People called me, you know, a pumper all the time because I covered these stocks and I believed in them. And I literally, that's what I spent 20 hours a day sometimes doing. And I, I still do. But I'm a long-term believer in clean energy. I'm a long-term believer in uranium. And I think it's probably going to be one of the best investment decisions I can make for my future in the next few years by investing in uranium. And I'll continue to do that. And it's already paid off. I love doing these videos. So you guys hit the like and subscribe button below. And until next time.